Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started now. Uh, again, my name is Kelly Clement. I'm the director of sales here at Metastock. Uh, Rahul, I just want to make sure that you're on and that you can hear me okay. You're fine. Okay, there you are, Rahul. Okay, great. Okay, uh, we'll get you started here in just a second, Rahul. So, uh, welcome to the uh, webinar today. This is the uh, What's New in the RMO ATM2. Uh, obviously, uh, Rahul Mahindar is a, is a great name among the Metastock community. Uh, he did an amazing job uh, quite a few years ago developing the RMO that uh, most of you have included in your Metastock uh, 10.0 and higher. So today we'll be talking about the RMO ATM2. So before we get into that, let's just start with our uh, standard disclaimer. This, and I'm just, just going to read through this really quickly, so give me just a moment. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins and are not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines for interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock should have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So, uh, as always, we all know that there's risk in the market. We all understand that, and we're here to talk, talk to you about methods that you can use in the market when you're trading and not to, to give you specific buy and sell examples. So keep that in mind as we're going through the presentation today. Uh, again, and let's just talk about Rahul uh, for just a moment and what he'll be talking about today. Um, again, for those of you who have Metastock 10.0 and higher, you have the uh, RMO ATM. And there's, a, excuse me, the RMO that's included in Metastock. And there's a lot of you that uh, use the RMO as part of your trading methodology. And through the years, Rahul, um, as always, and being the great instructor as he is, has put together great uh, videos to help you in learning the RMO and developing it. But throughout that time, people came to him and wanted more. And Rahul, being the trader they, that he is, has a lot of great ideas. So he put those into an additional uh, add-on for Metastock called the RMO ATM. And that was released uh, a few years ago. I believe uh, with version 11 we released that. Then um, Rahul has been you know, sitting down doing more research in the markets and has put together even more methods for us to be able to use as traders. And this is what's great about what Rahul does is you know, his methods and the way that he thinks in the market is just amazing. It really helps people get a grasp of what what to trade and when to trade, which is what we're all looking for. So we're going to have Rahul come in and talk to you about uh, what he's done with his new RMO ATM2 and uh, give you an overview of the new methods that he's uh, put together and also his new application called the Power Screener, which is uh, for those who have Metastock RT. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn the time over to, to Rahul. Uh, I'll be your host throughout. I'll be trying to answer questions that Rahul can't get to during the presentation. So if you do have questions, go ahead and put them in the box. And otherwise, uh, Rahul will uh, go through his presentation and get to questions as he can. So Rahul, let's uh, go ahead and turn it over to you, my friend. Thanks, Kelly. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, well, Kelly already uh, talked a bit about what I do. But essentially, I think if I could sum it up simply, what I enjoy doing the most is really charts and trading. I think technical analysis has been uh, kind of in my bloodstream and uh, I say that because right from my teens I've been fortunate to uh, be doing technical analysis. I've been uh, you know, trading from a very early age. So one of the things which uh, uh, has always excited me is the fact that charts uh, can help us become more rule-based, more disciplined. You know, we've seen, uh, you know, a lot of times where we understand that indicators are great, but our discipline isn't, uh, you know, uh, all that perfect to implement our trading plan. So I think the ATM uh, is, is, an, is a tool which is going to help us not just get more effective in trading, but also going to help us get more rule-based, more disciplined in our approach. So the idea of using something like the ATM is to channelize ourselves in a more organized and structured fashion, you know, rather than having a situation where your mind overtakes your method. So the ATM is all about trying to help you align to the market, trying to help you uh, get more rule-based in our analysis process without really 
uh, you know, making this necessarily a black box. So I'll take off from where Kelly left. The ATM has actually been around now a good seven to eight years since it was developed. And version 2.0, which released, uh, you know, just last month, uh, is, is a very nifty upgrade, which we did. And it took us a lot of time, uh, you know, close to to really build through that, test through that. So there's been a lot of groundwork and research that went into it because I wanted to make sure what I'm getting across is something which is, uh, you know, even better and a lot more uh, meaningful to users. There's a lot of feedback one gets and, you know, I love taking that feedback and, and trying to help uh, uh, all of us together as a community. So I think uh, what I'm going to do today, as Kelly mentioned, is to focus more on the new uh, additions, improvements, additions into the Armo ATM 2.0 add-on. I am not going to be talking about things like the breakout catcher or the counter trend indicator because they are several webinars and resources we've done in the past uh, and are available to you. So today's focus uh, is, is going to be very specific to three of the new strategies in the Armo ATM 2.0 and very specific towards the new app which is the Power Screener app. So uh, let's take it from, uh, you know, more than just a PowerPoint, what I want to do today is work with a lot of charts and, and you know, open up, you know, real-time charts and, and try and see how we apply them, practically use them with you. I want to make this uh, uh, more realistic rather than just going slide by slide PPD by uh, PPD. So let's, uh, uh, let's dive straight in. The first two which I'm going to talk about today uh, is going to be the... Uh, the ATM RMO template, which is the super filter. So whilst I don't want to run through the whole PPD necessarily, but just to give you a brief gist, just a few slides, the ATM is going to help us in this real world market, which is a lot more choppy than our theoretical market. Because whenever we read books on technicals, at least whenever I have, I've always seen this perfect rising top and rising bottom formation. But when you look at the chart, it looks more like the red you know, chart where you have a lot more of uh, erratic price action. It may still be in a trend, but it's definitely not as clean and simple uh, as a higher top, higher low formation with a perfect trend line. So in the real world of, of technical trading, we need systems which can handle this kind of volatility. We need systems which can adapt to markets when they're sideways. And that's what the ATM tries to do for you. Uh, so step one is to give you that clear rule-based approach, to give you indicators with that, which are based on not just breakout modules, but as well as counter trend modules, sideways zones, so things like the zone detector help us figure out if the market is dormant or sideways. So that's again a very big value add. Uh, when I say adapt to situations, I also mean the indicators need to be responsive and not work necessarily of fixed values. I mean just to simplify this, a lot of us use indicators on a particular value, but that value uh, does not necessarily need to have a global fit across the board. So the idea of having uh, you know, a dynamic value is so that the indicator adjusts to the chart that you're seeing and you know, gets you more aligned into uh, what you're really looking at to kind of give you a best fit. So that's what I mean by optimization and adaptiveness of the ATM. But all of this is done keeping in mind that it should not change past signals because you know a lot of times you get products out there which changes the past and you know the good thing about the ATM is we made sure if it gives you a certain buy or a sell or a bull or a bear signal it stays there so uh, you know there's something which uh, you have to understand that reliability comes in uh, you know along with that optimization and finally, when we built in the separate application called the ATM Power Screener, and uh, that's more for the folks who use uh, Zenith and Metastock RT because they need live uh, scanning and live, uh, you know, opportunity detection. So they use the ATM Power Screener app. And for those of you who don't use uh, Metastock Zenith or, and use the uh, daily charts version or the end of day, that is, uh, you can definitely continue to use all the new indicators that I'm going to talk about today and we have explorations which can help you do the scanning for that. So uh, it doesn't take away any feature really. You have everything uh, within that, uh, within the new Metastock uh, explorers that we're going to be giving uh, you with the ATM add-on. 
So let's dive straight into uh, getting into what are the different indicators uh, available with the add-on. Now we've got 10 different charting indicators we're giving you. So breakout catcher, zone detector, counter trend. So all of these, uh, uh, you know, are, are things I'm not going to be talking about today. As I mentioned, today's session is more to focus on the, the new strategies. And what I'm going to talk about is really the, uh, the trend decider suite, which is, you know, the bottom three indicators that you have there. And what I'm also going to do is uh, work with the SWI, which is the strength weakness indicator. So that's something I'm going to talk about. And I'm also going to talk about a new template which we've got in place, which is the ATM RMO. That's uh, number three, which I'm going to talk about. That's more a template and not just necessarily an indicator. So we call that the ATM RMO or the super filter method that we use. So before I get into the ATM RMO, let's just take a quick look at the inbuilt RMO that you have inside of Metastock. So when you look at the inbuilt RMO, you have red and blue bars marked on the chart and you have these buy and sell arrows that come up and just to help you uh, get aligned to those rules what we look at is when you have a blue bar and you see that the RMO is bullish you want to go and buy the market uh, so you have a blue bar a buy arrow and the RMO is bullish that what that's what together indicates a 3D buy or, or basically because three factors are in agreement and every time you have a sell signal, what you're really looking at is, if I have a sell, I want to look at red bar, red arrow, and if the RMO is negative, right? So that's what we want to do uh, with the original RMO that's built in. So very quickly, I would like to take this kind of a sell, I would like to take this kind of a sell, would like to take the sell, but not the buys. Why would I not take this buy in this little circle that I plotted? Because the RMO is still negative, and I don't want to be going against the major trend, so I don't want to be buying. It could just be a small corrective up move. So uh, that's very, very quickly a quick gist of the inbuilt RMO that you have inside of Metastock 10 and higher. Now, what we did was was to further filter this out. What we did was to build a new template called the ATM RMO. So when you uh, install the ATM, these templates get installed for you as well. So no matter whether you use daily or real-time charts, all you do is right-click and apply the template titled ATM RMO. And this is what you get. You pretty much get a similar looking screen, but what changes for you is the bar colors. We have recoded those bar colors to something which is uh, even more superior. And the reason why I say more superior is because you have four bar colors rather than just having a simple two bar color. The orange color indicates weakness, but the red color indicates a further confirmation of weakness. Likewise, light blue indicates mild strength and dark blue indicates a strong phase of strength. So let's say if the market is in a dark blue mode and starts moving into light blue and you start seeing changes happening that could just be a point where the trend changes. So you feel the trend a little better. So pretty much like when the red transited into a orange right at that bottom area. So the area that I've just circled up, when you look at the, the point where red transits into orange, that's kind of a little yellow light that's coming on for you saying, get ready for a change maybe, assess you know different things. Are you at a big support? Are you at a point where the market can potentially turn from. Look at counter trend strategies from there. So that change in color was, is going to talk to you. No taking away from the fact that red and orange are still bare colors. Likewise, light blue and dark blue are still bull colors. But you definitely get better sensitivity uh, to those indicators. Now, another area where the ATM RMO bar colors really scores over is the fact that when you look at phases like this where the market gets you know, sideways. So the market's stuck in a range, and you see that the RMO is going back and forth. Just look carefully in that phase. You went above it, below zero, above zero, and because of that, uh, you kind of kept thinking, oh, you know, it's changing, and maybe the RMO is just going to turn. But now with the new bar colors, you realize that, look, it's still red and still orange. I am not jumping into a situation like this, because it's kind of confusing. 
when this happens. So uh, the a the new bar colors or the ATM RMO super filter, as I call it, is really the uh, you know it, it's the ultimate filter you want which further filters out the ARMO itself. So it's it's all about making the very own inbuilt ARMO that you've been using inside of Metastock a lot more efficient and a lot more uh, in terms of helping you understand the quality of the trend that's existing. So like you see in this phase, whenever you get into this little boxy phase where it's kind of sideways and range bound, you see that the ATM ARMO tends to be a lot more easy on that trend. So you can see how it's it's kind of maintained itself blue all the way. And if you recollect the rules, even if you see the odd orange bar, you know, you, you want to make sure lows break down. And that doesn't happen. So you can see it's a lot more steady uh, than just seeing a lot of red and blue and red and blue and back and forth of the RMO. So it's all about helping you get more aligned, get more filtered, get better signals at the end of the day. That's what we're looking at with the ATM RMO. So quite honestly, just looking at the bar colors and the oscillator, that itself tells you a lot. So if you have a light blue and you see that the RMO is not yet bullish, but you know you, you get a sense, you know, let's talk about this phase here, which I'm circling up. It's light blue. You get an early indication that maybe the trend's going to change and, you know, start getting out of those shorts. Think about going long. So it gives you an early heads up. So sometimes you can see it's faster, where sometimes uh, it would just slow you down. So that's the really nice thing about the ATM RMO. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a faster indicator. It speeds up and slows down uh, as the market situation is. So to recap, we're looking at the new bar color methodology in the ATM RMO template to smoothen out the very own inbuilt RMO. So like you see over here, the RMO goes down, goes back up. When you look at the bar color still being light blue, you're not getting excited over here. You're just saying, all right, I understand that dark blue is light blue. There's a shift in sentiment, but don't conclude uh, you know, uh, in any direction immediately, just understand that it's kind of losing out of uh, its bull strength. And then finally, when you get the red bars and you see the RMO is negative, you're more aligned. So it filters out, it kind of filters out all those signals. Likewise, if you see a dark blue, I mean, this is really interesting because you see a dark blue signal right there, but the RMO is negative. So dark blue really means very, very strong trend. And Quite honestly, that gives me an early indication that maybe the armor is going to change later on with time. So you really want to think that whenever it does get above that high, uh, you want to make sure that the armor is bullish and all of that. But uh, the essence of it is that big blue bar that you see, the first dark blue bar that you see, sometimes gives you a lead into a trend change. So rather than uh, uh, you know always waiting for the RMO to turn and you see a dark blue, you get the first heads up that look, maybe I'm turning. So to recap, the bar colors really you know, speak to you uh, in a big way. And, and what I want to do today is uh, look at a couple of charts and that way we get a better sense of things. So what I'm going to open up is a 30 minute daily and a 60 minute because I know you're, a lot of you folks look at daily, some of you look at intraday time frame. So I'm just going to try and uh, mix a few charts here. So let's start by looking at uh, say the SPY and um, we'll look at this on the 30 minute chart. And just to give you a, a quick heads up on it, the minute you look at the bar colors on that SPY, you get a sense that this whole phase from here has been bullish, right? This whole little square that I've drawn for you is bullish. Now you might say, oh, but the armo came in a lot earlier. But hang on, we wanted to wait for the dark blue because that's when we feel really solid about it. We have it all confirmed when we get the dark blue. And what you do is, if you see the dark blue, you can you know, use a little filter, say buy above that high, and you can see the market uh, pretty much took that high out. That's where it gets you long. So you don't just have the regular armo, now you have the super filter confirming a solid trend with the dark blue. It's not light blue, and that's what tells you that the market is, is going to shoot up. And you know, we pretty much caught that uh, probably before uh, you know, the, the long weekend that you just had. So that, that's a, a fairly good signal that you saw in the recent past. This is 30 minute SPY. And another area which I, I definitely want you to look at is, you know, this is a phase where maybe you get a bit confused, where you say the armo has gone bullish. Maybe I should jump in and buy. 
Now when you look at the bar colors as orange, you realize, hang on, even if the RMO has gone bullish, the super filter says, wait, it should at least become light blue. Right? And that's what saves you from getting into the market anywhere there. So uh, you're definitely many, many legs up uh, when you're looking at this. So when you see you know, things like orange and red and all of that happening together, you know you can just put uh, you know, a lot more weight to that signal so you don't just get refinement. You don't, get, you don't just save yourself from the odd whipsaw, but you also get a solid uh, feeling as to whether this trend is uh, at what kind of strength. So that gives you a quick example. Well, this is actually all of February we had on the SPY on the 30-minute chart. And, you know, that's a, a fairly good indication that you get. Let's look at an hourly chart now, and this one's uh, a chart of McDonald's. Um, so when you look at the hourly chart now, just look at the bar colors. For me, what's more important now with the new ATM Armo template so just to remind you, right-click, apply template. What I'm looking at is this template called ATM RMO. Okay, so that's what I'm applying to get this. So the minute you get light blue and you have the buy arrow and you see that uh, the market's bullish, right? So I'm, I'm really focusing on to uh, that area there, and you can see the RMO is is in that bullish phase you get an indication that the market's changing trend. So that's a very strong signal uh, in terms of an up breakout, especially when that turns dark blue and the high gets kicked out. So the first indication of weakness comes in when dark blue starts becoming light blue. That's when I start thinking maybe the market's topish. So if the market's at a strong resistance according to you or has kind of run its legs according to you, reached a certain Fibonacci level or, or whatever kind of target mechanism you use, and you see that light blue, you may want to lighten up. But if you're talking where do I go short, uh, you know, better later because it's more solid. And it's this time not an orange, it's a red. A red is, is a fairly strong, fierce signal uh, which tells you uh, you know, that's a good point to go short. Now, uh, when you look at the RMO as well, that's also with you. So pretty solid stuff. Now, this is where it really helps you, where it goes back and forth. Look at the, the previous, you know, the little rectangle that I drew on the RMO. Went from bearish to bullish, back to bearish. Now, when you see the bar colors, we're not jumping around, right? We understand it's still weak. We're not going to do it till we see a light blue or a dark blue come in and you can see some dark blue comes in there but doesn't really break out those highs. Now I always suggest that whenever you you buy or you sell, uh, you always go short a few ticks below that low. So you might even want to give it a little, you know, think of it going out of that little circle that I drew uh, before it, it jumps out. So if you see a blue bar, give it a little room and you say, let's get out of that whole area. So don't just dive straight in. Uh, you want to make sure that you use little filters. But what you can see essentially is that the ATM RMO beautifully filters out a lot of the sideways signals as well as gives you a very clear understanding on the trend. So you get a sensitivity, if I could put it that way, uh, on the trend. Now let's look at a daily and we'll look at one of those energies. Uh, so this is uh, a chart of, of Chevron. And you can see pretty much, even though Chevron's been very sideways, what I do see is all red bars on the daily. So even today, I still see it as an orange bar and not yet a, a trend reversal. So whilst if I have to use, uh, you know, say the RMO, I have to do a lot of confirmation then because just look carefully on that. There's a lot of back and forth, uh, you know, in and out of zero. And this is the kind of space I want to be saved in. And that's when, you know, having all of this blue just keeps me intact instead of trying to jump around on that trade. I'd rather be steady in one direction uh, and be more focused. So like you see even on the big downfall, we had a huge downtrend, all of them solid red bars. When you become orange, uh, you know, which is pretty much a phase where we started becoming orange right there, that's when you start identifying change and that's when the change kicks in really. So that whole bar color uh, concept comes in uh, very handy and helps you, you know, further understand the trend, further confirm the RMO signals, 
further increase your accuracy on the basic RML, and I think it kind of gives you a lead to it all. And, and, and you know, the whole the whole idea is to give you uh, an expert. You know, we're, we're even working on this expert. It's still not yet released, but over the next uh, couple of weeks, we're going to give you this expert, which I call the ultimate chart check. It does a full checkup on all the various studies on trend, so trend decider, SWI, breakout catcher, all of that stuff, and then gives you a, a, a beautiful commentary uh, with that. So this is all on the ATM Armo template, and uh, the expert commentary is being uh, uh, built in. So we're always upgrading. That's the nice thing. We're, we're always, even though we've just upgraded, we're already working on uh, on giving you the next piece, which will probably come in uh, very shortly, as I said, in a week or two. So uh, the expert commentary is something which is definitely going to help because let's say you're looking for situations where the market's just turned into a dark blue. Uh, we're going to have a new scan, which is called uh, the ATM Armo Super Filter. Again, this is all going to be given to you in two weeks from now, so I'm kind of giving you that little sneak preview uh, for attending this webinar. And uh, you get an idea that we're, we're adding that scan, which tells you which are the ones which are just turning dark blue or in a pure red color or which are the ones turning from a light blue to a dark blue. So all of that stuff is, is also being added into, but even uh, without that, I think what you all understand is the concept, the concept of understanding the bar colors, uh, which, which definitely filter out a lot of the RMO signals for you and increase your efficiency uh, and accuracy. Now the next indicator which I'm going to talk about, and again if you do have questions I would appreciate if you uh, just make note of them, I'd be more than happy to uh, answer you on your, on your questions if we have the time uh, post the session today. So we'll, we'll, we'll start in a few minutes for that. But the next uh, study which I want to dive straight into is uh, the ATM Trend Decider Suite. Uh, the Trend Decider Suite is really three different indicators I'm using. Uh, I've titled them as Trend Decider Daily, Weekly, and Monthly, and there's a reason why we've we've titled it that way. Uh, basically, if I could clarify to you, the Trend Decider Daily tells me that uh, it gives me a particular level for today, uh, and I think there's no better way than than actually applying it on a on a price chart uh, and then uh, looking at a few examples. So if I look at the trend decider daily, I understand that if the price is trading above the green line, and I'm just going to, uh, for a moment, uh, just probably change the color. I just want you to focus on the green line, which is the trend decider daily. So if the market goes above the trend decider daily, you're bullish for the day, right? You're bullish for the day. So every time you go and break the green line, you're bearish. Uh, for so if you break through that green you're bearish if you go through that green you're bullish right so that's just for one single day now a lot of you may say hey this doesn't help me because I don't day trade I don't necessarily put on a trade for one single day which is why we give you the trend decider weekly which is actually more my personal favorite because I try to look at things with a slightly bigger perspective beyond just one day now uh, this is where you understand and again what I'm going to do is is change the colors on the daily so I can get you to focus a little bit on that uh, red line and let me just thicken it up for you. So every time the market breaks uh, the red line you know it's bearish for a week for the entire week so you know that the trends changed uh, on that. So likewise uh, we broke out uh, this weekend uh, you know on the upside so we went through that red line and it tells you are broken out for the next week or so. And what you also need to understand is the fact that the weekly level updates uh, after every week ends, which obviously means a Monday effectively. So you get a new level every Monday uh, when you're looking at the trend decider weekly. So who looks at the trend decider daily? Someone who trades intraday and wants to know the level above which or below which uh, you know, a new trend could take place. Who looks at the trend decider weekly? Someone who wants to take a perspective that I'm trading for the next couple of days a week and I want to see that if the trends change on that. Then we also have a monthly which is in place. Uh, you know, that gives you more an idea from a month perspective. So depending on your time horizon, you get a, a, a perspective. I personally like to use a lot of the daily and the weekly and uh, I would 
you know, tell you to start with and focus with on the daily and weekly, particularly if you're looking at that trading agenda uh, in terms of shorter time frames, maybe even one day, two day, five day, seven day, uh, that kind of uh, window, then I think the daily and the weekly are exceptionally helpful. Uh, the monthly definitely helps if you can hang in for bigger time frames. So I keep my core uh, as the daily and the weekly, and it, it works pretty darn well. So let's look at uh, you know more of these charts with the uh, trend decider daily, weekly, and understand more uh, about them. So just for the purpose of this exercise, what I'm going to do is I will uh, you know uh, make the green daily line and the red weekly nice and thick so we can all get good views of it. And what we need to understand is if the price is trading below the daily and the weekly, we're bearish. So let me identify one such point where where the price suddenly started. So where I've circled right now, that's an area where the market suddenly broke through the green and the red. And again, I'm not focusing on that monthly level now, so I've just deleted it. So that's where the market breaks the daily and the weekly. So that gives you a big idea uh, in terms of a trend change. This is incidentally an hourly chart of Microsoft. And uh, when you look at that trend change, uh, that's obviously got you down a big bit. Likewise, where did the trend change recently on Microsoft? Again, this weekend when we had a closing, a 60-minute bar that closed above the daily and the weekly. So what we're looking for in terms of strength is a close above the daily and the weekly. Now, sometimes what happens is uh, I want to draw your attention to patches like this. Uh, you know, look at the, the biggest circle that I've plotted, which is a, a light blue kind of circle. Why am I not so excited over there? I'm getting a hint. I'm getting a hint that I'm getting bullish for the day. But I'm still not sure if the trends really change because the price may be above the daily level, but I'm still below that weekly. So remember, the overall trend hasn't changed. It just may be more an intraday kind of change rather than anything else. So uh, you know, keep in mind that the daily the trend decider daily is giving you a one day view versus the weekly which is giving you a slightly bigger picture and the way I'd like to see it is let's go above both to be bullish or come below both to be bearish. Now another very important thing which I would recommend you keep in mind is if you see that the green line or the trend decider daily is above the weekly like you see right now in Microsoft uh, you, you can see it's bullish uh, so therefore that indicates strength because the green line is above the red line. So trend decider daily is above the weekly. Likewise, you can see over here that's where uh, the trend decider daily broke through the weekly. So quite honestly, I would really be solid sure at that point because now I'm not just below both the levels, I'm also uh, looking at my trend decider daily going below my weekly. So to recap, if I had to give you three simple rules to buy or sell on this model, and if you want to make a note, you can. Uh, well, this is also docketed in the manual that I wrote, but very quickly, if I'm looking at a buy situation, I want to be closing above the daily level, closing above the weekly level, and I want to see my green line or the trend decider daily line above the trend decider weekly if I'm buying. Likewise, if I'm selling, I want to see it closing below daily, closing below weekly, and the green line uh, below the red. So trend decider daily should be lower than the weekly if you're trying to short the market. So, and, and the nice thing is this is so dynamic and it moves every day you have a new trend decider daily, every week you have a new trend decider weekly level, every month uh, you know, on the first of every month or the first trading day of every month, you have a new monthly level. So it really kicks in. Now, do you have to use the monthly? Not necessarily. I personally don't use it. I just use it more as a reference point. If it's really close by, maybe I'll look at that as well. But if it's not, well, I would still, uh, you know, take the trade purely. Uh, let's look at a couple of more charts to get a perspective. So if you look at this chart of, of Citigroup, and this is again an hourly, and, and you know, a lot of times people ask me this question, what's the best time frame to use? Well, quite honestly, uh, if you look at the daily and the weekly level, so let's say if the daily level is at 38.83, if I change this from an hourly to a 10 minute chart, let's say, the level is still going to be the same, right? So we're looking at 
the trend is either daily level or the weekly level, they're, they're all just going to be the same. It's not going to change for me. Uh, what, what's going to change is, is basically the current, the price pattern changes a bit. But let's get back to, let's say, the hourly chart uh, and, and get a better understanding because it's easier to kind of grasp from there. So I wouldn't really drop down uh, too low in terms of time intervals. So there you are. So the daily, so right now if I looked at Citigroup, uh, what's happened to Citigroup? All this time uh, the market was below the big monthly level. If you had a big, you want to take the big perspective, look at that purplish uh, or rather lavender colored line there. We're always been below it. So on the monthly level the big picture is down. Look at the red line. Those are the weekly steps. And you can see we barely had a week where we went above it. So what interests me is the fact that why not look at an area like this? Even though the price went above daily and weekly, the green trend decider daily is still below the weekly. So don't get excited and jump in there. Remember, unless I see all three, closing above daily, closing above weekly, and the green line ticking past the weekly level, uh, let's not get uh, heavily into it. So when you do have that situation, now that comes in uh, a little later. You can see that comes in somewhere there. What you want to make sure is whenever that comes in, uh, you know, let's kick out those highs. And particularly if you're trying to establish a very, very long-term trend on it, you also want to make sure, see the monthly in this case is pretty close by. And, and that gives you a very interesting uh, perspective that, you know, barely closes above it. And if you do even, uh, you know, get into it for any reason, the minute it closes back below daily and weekly, uh, you're back in the downtrend. So it's it's very nice to get that perspective, and the expert actually labels up bearish and bullish for you right at the base points, and you know that's where you want to look at it. Uh, you know you 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 not just get an idea as to the three rules that I gave you, but the expert pretty well handles it. And again, if you want to uh, you know get some commentary on this, uh, so let's look at ATM trend deciders. So if it, if it says it's bullish, means pretty much the three rules that I just explained to you are intact. Okay? So, uh, you know, let's say that we want to look at this a couple of bars before. Let's say if I looked at this, you know, you know, somewhere near that weekend. So, you know, before the, the week ended, you can see the market start going up a bit. It says TD minus, 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 which means it's more a corrective up move. And uh, we're not really looking at, uh, you know, major strength because the trend decided weekly is not yet crossed. So, but when you look at, say, uh, a bit later, you understand that, okay, this is breaking out because the TD is bullish. And that gives you a nice explanation uh, in terms of what's happening to the trend. So, the expert advisor does a pretty good job there. And, of course, you have explorations and the power screeners uh, to come in handy as well. Now, uh, let's look at some more examples on this, and I've just taken hourly for these examples. Of course, you can use 30 minutes, you can use 15 minute, but I tend to think that, you know, the sweet spot is really 30 and 60 uh, in terms of time frames to use. You kind of get a, a very nice view on it, uh, looking at it that way. But again, everyone's trading profile could be different. You could be using this on a daily chart and just working with the trend decider weekly and the monthly and not looking at uh, the, you know, the daily level. So uh, particularly if you're an end of day user, you might actually be using more of that weekly level and monthly level than anything else. But if you're an intraday trader or someone who trades maybe two days, three days, five days, 10 days, you still would probably like the daily and the weekly sync uh, coming in. Now. Uh, let's get into the third strategy, which is the uh, SWI, or the Strength Weakness Index. And this one's a, a pretty different perspective because it gives you a view on, on volume. So, you know, we're just going beyond uh, looking at a standard price. We're going to be looking at some volume now. So, we've, so the SWI uses volume as its essential ingredient which makes it an excellent indicator to gauge strength and weakness. What drives this market, friends, is the fact that, you know, the market breaks out and we've got volume with it. The market breaks down and we've got volume pushing it down. So without the volume, we don't get the push. Without the volume, we don't get the confirmation. So the SWI is really the, the core component of that strength weakness index is volume. And the nice thing about it is 
you can complement this so well with all your price driven tools so whether you use say the uh, the ATM RMO template which we talked about earlier on or the trend decider strategies which I just spoke about uh, and looked at uh, you know from a price perspective the SWI really brings in that volume element and gives you that really nice piece of confirmation so when you look at the SWI uh, it's more confirmatory if I could put it but you can also use it as a separate trade setup uh, but the way I like to use it is is more complement uh, my price driven analysis and I'll show you how I think we could all use this uh, effectively so let's move into again some charts uh, well for a change let's just look at a maybe even a five minute chart uh, let's take a symbol like coke and okay so let's move this to a five minute chart and what I'm going to do is apply a template uh, this time I'm going to be applying let's say the ATM RMO template which we spoke about and so there you can say this stock has been definitely this is a five minute chart has been definitely on a bull run we've got all light blues dark blues so pretty solid uptrend that it's established over there and still looks uh, nice and firm there but then you want to look at you know is the volume confirming this whole setup as well so do you have volume which is driving it with the trend so what you do is you can plot the indicator from your you know drop it down from your indicator quick list and what it does for you is plots this little red line and gives you a perspective on volume so rather than using it as my driving force into a new trade I can get an idea as to you know the volume if the price is above that red line it suggests that the volume is flowing with me right so let's look at the current area since we're kind of in a uh, a more real-time scenario we've got light blue bars there which tell us I'm still in bull strength we got the armor which is nice and solid above zero so price wise uh, you know I'm not worried about the trend but volume wise I can see that you know maybe we're, we're starting to slip a bit and uh, you know what you want to do is okay will it break down this level the low of that bar the first bar that breaks down and that's when I start coming to any kind of conclusion but otherwise you know you just keep taking that trade forward uh, the way you're on it so it gives you that volume uh, confirmation and this is where if you look at the ultimate chart checkup which I just spoke to you about that is a pretty cool uh, way to do this you look into the uh, commentary there and again the ultimate chart check is going to be with the ATM RMO template releasing in about two weeks from now but what, what we're doing is the breakout catcher is bullish, the trend decider is bullish, the SW is bearish but you know it's not confirmed because that low is not taken and you look at the RMO2 indicators as well so it's a nice way to see that in, in, in totality we're bullish but you know from a volume perspective well, you know we still need some legs there uh, again we haven't broken the lows so let's not dive to conclusions so the SWI gives you this nice little take on volume uh, and, and, and gives you a perspective because there's so many price driven indicators out there but there are very few of them which are more uh, volume driven so let's say if I used even a, a chart like Chevron which is a uh, fairy sideways okay we, we, we've been in this sideways phase and you can see that you know how even the volume suggested that uh, we're, we're below that SWI line and therefore it's bearish there was this one day we moved above it but again still red bars now you started seeing going red to orange you're getting some volume confirmation there uh, so all that's going to be fitting into tell you that you know maybe you got to keep a close watch on it if it reverses in terms of trend so uh, the SWI is, is really that volume perspective uh, that you're looking for so you know let's look at a, a daily chart there uh, this time on GE we'll look at that daily chart and uh, there you go you know despite it having a lot of up and down up and down a lot of multiple swings in the trend well, you can see how the SWI still says hang in, hang in, hang in. It doesn't really want to conclude right out there. And, uh, you know, definitely if you get volume full kicking in, that's going to come in handy. So, you know, let's say you get a light blue bar and the SWI is bullish, the RMO is bullish. You feel good when you see dark blue, further bullish. When you see the market slipping, you, you know, you move from, uh, you know, look carefully at this phase. Dark blue move to light blue you got the first red arrow there and you also started slipping on the volume front so are you going to be happy holding on to this stock 
No, you want to definitely take some profit and reassess if I want to go short, etc. So uh, the SWI gives you that whole volume piece. And again, if I'm, I'm going to try and apply the SWI in a symbol which doesn't have volume data, it's obviously not going to work. So if you're going to try and apply it on, let's say, an index or something which doesn't carry volume because it doesn't trade, it's just a, a spot symbol maybe, the SWI would really not give you uh, a signal. So those are really the core uh, three new strategies. And again, we've, we've put that, we've docketed that um, in the manuals as well. Okay, so, you know, these are more examples on the chart. You have the experts, all of that. Uh, and that kind of brings me to the next part of the presentation, which is the power screener. And considering the market's on, it's a good time to show this to you uh, uh, in real time and show you different features uh, that you folks can use. Again, just to recap, if you do use Metastock Zenith uh, and you are on Metastock RT, that is, uh, you can use the power screener. If you do not, the power screener uh, does not help you because you know someone who uses this is really using it to get real-time indications. You would be better off using the uh, inbuilt explorers, right? Because you can actually scan your custom list and you can scan big lists of stocks. So coming to the power screener, uh, it's your go-to screen as I would put it. It kind of tells you everything. We give you voice alerts, we give you email alerts, so you actually have a human voice which could speak out you know, RMO 3D buy on uh, Intel, or uh, let's say you have a trend decider alert on a particular stock. So it would actually voice those alerts out to you. It could email those alerts to you. And you could set up a list of stocks that you trade in. And it could be custom lists, obviously. So you choose your stocks, you choose your indicators, you choose the time frame you want to look at, and it works totally in an efficient uh, and customized way to give you really what you're looking for. So let's say if something you are really focused on is the breakout catcher and the RMO 3D buys, you can really focus on those. Or you know, uh, you want to look at say the new SWI signal or the trend designer signal, you can focus on those only. So let's dive straight into the application and uh, let's show you how we use the power screener uh, more effectively. So coming to the app, you just double click on the uh, icon which you have on your desktop, which is the ATM power screener icon. And of course, it first needs to connect me with Metastock Zenith so that I can get the data access to it. So as soon as you see connected at the bottom, so data manager connected, that tells you that uh, uh, you know it's connected to your Metastock account. So let's open up the pre-built pages. So that's the open button. And before I get into signals and all of that, I just want to give you a nice little overview uh, on the power screener, on how you uh, can make a new page. So let's say if I've got a totally new page and I want to enter a stock, I, I need to key in my stock. And I have to be specific. So if IBM is what I'm looking for, so just type into the cell or say JCPenney is what I'm looking for, type in the cell. Now if I'm going to type JCP in lowercase, that's not going to work. I need to be uppercase because sometimes this is very specific. You know, for example, if I'm looking for a future symbol, uh, you know, I might have to do a small c1 or, you know, I might have symbols which have ACC in our Indian market, we've got a symbol like that. So uh, we have to make sure that we are specific on the case that you're entering. Uh, and that the so simple thing is just double click on the cell, key in what you want. Now you can make groups of stocks. So let's say if I want to make, say, uh, a group of banking stocks. Okay? So all you do is you press the asterisk sign on your keyboard for making a group. And you type in a group name. Okay? So that's what gets you a group. And underneath that, let's say you want to put in, say, city group or uh, you know, so again, I got to make sure I got the right symbols kicking in, or say a uh, Bank of America chart. Okay. So you can keep kicking in those signals and typing them in, and you know, again, we've we've preset some pages for you. So like like the Dow 30 stocks and Nasdaq 100 stocks, uh, you can uh, you know dive straight into them. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to open up a say the NASDAQ 100 and that gets you all the various stocks. 
Now you can add columns which are relevant to you. So we've got 30 fields. So uh, you know, with uh, which you can add into it. So let's say I want to look at uh, the last price. I just hit add. I want to look at the change from yesterday. I want to look at the change percent. Now, in case you want to look at the change from even a five-minute perspective, you can change that. So that's pretty cool. It's not just a change in a change percent. You can say I wanted a change on a five-minute chart, and you could just see the five-minute change. So uh, let's say I want to look at the uh, counter trend indicators. And here you have the option to select do you want an email alert, sound alert. Okay. So I'm just going to hit add. So whatever indicators you want to use, um, you can definitely add them. So let's say you like using the RMO system for the 3D buy and sell setups, or you like using the breakout catcher. Uh, so we'll go into the breakout catcher system. And uh, you know here we can select if, so I'm just turning off sound alerts for now. Otherwise, you just keep hearing my computer. So what it does for you real quick, gets you real-time code boards updating live in real time and, uh, you know, signals uh, that you want. So, uh, again, feel free to move these columns around the way you want. We've thought of a lot of little details. So let's say I want the RMO column up in front. You can move the columns, the breakout catcher right up in front. Okay, so you can shift columns, just drag those columns where you want them to be. So that's nice. So to manage your screen real estate, you can justify these columns. So let's say you just, you know, pretty much like Excel, you double click on that and it just uh, gives you that best fit justification. Okay, so you've got justify on the columns. Uh, you can make groups of stocks. You can, uh, you know, let's say, we, we just justify everything over here. So you can see how I've got better screw, screen real estate management. You can, of course, further drag them out if you feel they're too squashed up. So, you know, all those little details are there. You know, some of the things which are really handy is the fact that you can actually have indicators work off different time frames. So let's say you want the RMO signals work off the five-minute chart. But the counter trend, you pretty much like using it on a 60-minute chart. So you can have different indicators work to different time frames too. Uh, you know, and here you have the breakout catcher working on a daily. So you can see how on one power screen or page, I've got you know three different indicators working on three different time frames on over 100 symbols on my list. And all of this is running in real time, scanning those opportunities for you, you know, right there in real time. And what you, you know, you don't have to run a scan necessarily. Uh, you know, one of the things which I found a, a little difficult in real time was every time go to an exploration. So let's say if I'm someone who uses a five-minute chart, every five minutes I can't be hitting the explorer, or every 20 minutes hitting the explorer. In fact, we've even added some intervals which you don't get with your standard explorations. So stuff like 15 minute, 25 minute, 75 minute, 180 minute. You know, this is which are not necessarily available in the default exploration. So we've added that too. And we've also added a lot of regular studies. So a lot of you folks who like to look at, say, Bollinger Bands or candlesticks or, you know, things like uh, the moving averages. We've added uh, all of those essential studies for you. So say you want the RSI. And, you know, the RSI is nice because you can define it. You want stuff that's... Uh, you know, an overbought and oversold, or stuff that's exiting overbought and oversold. You want a sound alert for it. Okay, so very quickly you can see, okay, these are stocks which are, OB means overbought. Okay, and these are stocks which are oversold and are possibly exiting out of oversold because the RSI is moving out. So uh, we've, we've thought about a lot of detail. Again, uh, align that those columns the way you want, move those columns the way you want. And one of the nicest things I like is I can enter a comment. So let's say I want to add a comment field. And uh, so all I did was I right click on the header row and add comments. And let's say uh, I want to put a comment on win. And we'll say we buy um, if it goes to 75. Let's say that's a little note you want in your mind that if the stock drops, you want to look at entering it. So you can put in little comments and notes, and you can even add positions. So let's say if you actually hold win, 
then you want to put in your trade on uh, win and see what's your PL like. Uh, right click on this, add column, and we're going to add the M2M PL, what I call mark to market profit loss. Okay, and here I can enter my actual trade. So I'm just going to go type in my actual trade right there. Um, and again, if you feel that there's too many columns, I want to reduce them, you can right click, remove the particular column, or you can right click and even remove all the columns if that's what you want to really do. So, uh, so whenever you want to enter a trade, so let's say, uh, okay, we're looking at, uh, okay, let's just put it on GILD. Let's say we bought a thousand shares at a price of 85, 45. So you immediately get to know your PR. And you can further add to that. You can say, look, I bought another thousand uh, at 89 as well. And what it does for you, it averages out and gives you your net PR. So just add a comma and then your next position. Or if you're short, so let's say if you're short on LMCA, say you shorted 580 shares at 33.4, you immediately get to know you're losing a percent on that and the amount of dollars you're losing on it. Again, it's not meant to do uh, uh, you know, a portfolio management or something, but very quickly as traders, we want to know how much we're making or losing and uh, get an immediate view to it. So. Uh, that's pretty nice. So as you can see your live p and uh, Now, one or two things which I want to talk about today is uh, searching for symbols. So you can do a quick symbol search here. So you can go ahead and type it in straight or click on the box. Uh, let's see if I'm looking for a symbol of Coke, okay? Um, you know, and I just know cola. And it's going to look for, you know, any stock which has the word cola on it and come out. And I can, you know, double click on exchange and sort it by exchange, right? I can double click by description, all right? And you can choose which one you want to look for. So let's say if I just want to look for uh, KO and I just want to look for symbols which are KO and not descriptions because obviously there will be many stocks which have a KO in them. So now I can look for symbols that have the, you know, a word KO on it and say, I don't want to look at indices, I want to look at, uh, you know, markets necessarily. So you can go in that way. So the symbol search is a very handy tool and uh, helps me. So let's say I'm looking for win and I don't know the precise symbol. And if I, you know, so there you are. So I want to look win.o, which is the one on NASDAQ. I can straight away insert it into my watch list straight from there. Okay, so that's the symbol search. That little icon that you see with the M, that gives you direct access into Metastock. So if you click on uh, the M icon over there, that launches you straight into the Metastock app. That, of course, is a, a sticky note, which is more Windows application and calculators. We've got help resources so that you can contact support. Okay, we've got a nice manual. So when you click on that question mark, it opens up the manual that we've done, and you always get the updated manual. Uh, whenever we, uh, whenever you click on that question mark icon, so it get, that gives you access to the 35-page uh, manual I recently wrote up. So that's more giving you a brief overview on the layout. But I'm going to discuss is the properties a bit today. And one of the things which we need to be familiar with is uh, email alerts. If you if you want email alerts, you obviously need to have uh, you know a Gmail account and a password which is set in over there. Uh, presently we only support Gmail and uh, so you need to enter your username and password so that it can send and receive emails. Uh, if you want to change the voice, so if you want to go from uh, you know different voice on your computer, you know, let's say a male voice, female voice, you can change it. Speak rate is the speed at which it speaks because when it says uh, you, you might find it slow or fast. Volume adjustments. Uh, the number of decimal places that you want to look at. So we've paid a lot of attention to detail, folks. So we've really thought here. We've really, uh, you know, gone through this in detail. Uh, you want four decimals, one decimal, whatever you want, set that up. 
we've got a very nice feature called auto save. So if for any reason you forget to save your files, every time you exit it automatically saves a backup. Right? So auto save is a very nice feature. If you don't wish to use auto save, of course, you can turn that off. Uh, auto sort columns every 30 seconds. Now we've got a very nice feature here called auto sort. So let's say if I'm looking for RMO buys, um, you know, and I can just double click on the RMO and all the buys get lined up for me. And this gets auto sorted. So let's say there's a new stock which is suddenly a buy. It goes right up on my list. So auto sort uh, allows it to uh, bring up new, uh, you know, new trades right on the on the top of your screen. Now you can of course auto sort it by change. So let's say if I'm looking for the top gainers or losers, I, I can auto sort and I can see PCLN and VIP. They are the top gainers right now. And uh, if you want to look for you know sorting alphabetically, double click on the symbol and you would see them alphabetically sorted. And all of this is auto sorted every 30 seconds. And of course, you can change that. You can say, look, auto sorted every 15 minutes only because I don't like to look at changing the list too often. Okay, so again, suit yourself on that. But the idea of keeping it 30 seconds is so that it's snappy and picks it up while the market's live. Now, another recommendation uh, that I have for you folks who use the power screener is to use a feature called compute on close. And the reason I like to use this feature is uh, because it gives you more confirmed signals. So let's say I'm on a five minute bar and you know there's an arm of buy on the five minute bar but by the time the bar ends it's no more a buy. What do you do? You don't really buy it. But again there's we unnecessarily got excited. Right? When I do compute on close it only gives me the signal as soon as the bar closes. Because once I get it it's a confirmed signal all I do is place my order in above the high or a few ticks above that high. So I like to use the compute on close feature. I strongly recommend um, everyone to use it. And again, you can go through the different properties on various indicators. So we've even thought the distance in terms of you know, naming the headers the way you want. So let's say N to MPL is not something which you can relate to. You can right click on this and you know you can edit these columns. So you can say instead of M to MPL, I'd rather just call it profit loss, okay? And that's how you want to name it. So you can name the columns the way you want. You can, uh, you know, pretty much size them up, justify them. So you want to have an alignment to the left, alignment to the right, you know, all of those little things. So I'd urge you to right click and, and play around with it a bit, double click on the cells. Uh, you know, we've, we've, we've done a lot there. So the auto sort is definitely going to be a very, very nifty feature for you to be using. So now let's come to the core in terms of identifying trades. So another important feature when you're trying to identify new opportunities is to given the times that you're trading. So let's say uh, you want a 24-hour session uh, where basically it's not filtering any data, it just uses all the data that's there, or you want to have a custom session. So let's say if you're in a market which trades from 9.30 in the morning, and the reason why I'm entering this is maybe I don't want to look at pre-open ticks, uh, and which closes at say uh, 4.02, because maybe you get a closing at uh, 4.02. Let's say you want to ignore that closing, you can make it 4 o'clock. So it, it, you can really define the session times there and understand that, okay, these are the signals that I'm getting. So the minute I see, say, AMAT.O on the five minute, I can quickly jump to that and see, uh, do I have a 3D buy and, you know, uh, assess whether I want to take that trade. Okay, so that's the RMO trade model, which it fired up on, and it came in on a five minute chart, so let's also look at a five minute chart. Okay, so what you're going to see is you have, uh, uh, all right, I've pretty much moved to the ATM RMO and I've, okay, well, well, let's do it on some other uh, trade setup there. We'll look at, say, a breakout catcher or a strength weakness indicator. So what we're doing is, 
putting in a time frame that we want and then looking at it uh, in terms of a new trading signal. So let's see if I'm looking for a breakout catcher buy or a RMO2 signal. Okay. So, so I can quickly look at these are the stocks which are on a buy and I can just, you know, jump to those stocks. And then you can assess with the ATM RMO template if you if you want to be looking at that or Okay, so there you are. You got the alert as well. Okay. So, that's pretty much how we're doing it. And uh all of these signals come up in real time, and of course you can scan it on daily time frames, weekly time frames, uh, you know, even the trend decider, for example, which I talked to you about. This is called TD Auto, and I can put it on a 60-minute chart, let's say. And uh, TD Auto is a pretty nice way to understand the market because when you see that the 60-minute is mostly bullish, it just tells you that the market's strong. You don't have any stocks which are, uh, you know, in that. Uh, even as a minus, 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 or a red bar, okay? So that's what's good about it is you get a, an idea, a perspective of the market. And you can further look at, uh, say, the RMO as well on the 60-minute. You know, just I'm just trying to make everything 60 so you get a nice idea as to what's happening, okay? And uh, when you see all of that, uh, you get, you know, there's more green all over, uh, and you know there's very little red. You have the odd reds there, but then again, that's uh, minimalistic. You need to figure out that. Um, so if you want to delete a row, just right-click to delete a row. You want to insert a row. I mean, let's say you want to make this a group. You can just delete one row and say, these are my stocks for February. Okay, and make a little group for yourself. So it's quite nifty in terms of features. You can, uh, you know, do it your way. Pretty much scan your way through it. Uh, and again, you, you know, if you do, those of you on the end of day, uh, you know, I keep getting this. Oh, but I can't use the power screener. Well, don't be disheartened for any reason because, come on, you get all the new indicators, all the new experts. You have scans for every little thing we do, uh, and uh, you know, right up to identifying new SWI buys, RMO signals, uh, trend decider signals so all of that's been programmed into explorations and you can run it on very very large groups of stocks uh, now the power screener can pretty comfortably handle two to three hundred uh, you know rows and columns uh, so it's it's quite robust well of course it depends largely on your internet so chances are you are using a, uh, a high-speed connection uh, if you have an SSD drive and all of that it really uh, cruises through and, and runs pretty efficiently so uh, the power screener is more your screen to go to to understand the trend of the market because the minute you see that all these bullish and green start changing to reds and oranges, you get an idea as to a, a shift in the market. So the new column that we're adding for you folks, uh, which you get uh, in the next two weeks, the, is the new super filter column. Right. So the minute you get the super filter column, let's say I make this a 60 minute as well. And that gives you a perfect idea on the trend of the market. And again, I'm, I'm going to switch off my uh, voice alerts. So that's a good way to understand the trend of the market through the power screener itself. And uh, at the same time, you, you get a fair idea as to what the uh, market's doing, what your positions are doing for you, how the market's uh, setting up. So all of these... Uh, features are really thinking about you as a trader and uh, and you know all of these settings are, are very very customizable so again if I want to jump pages so let's say I want to move to my indices page uh, okay it's automatically saved the page I was just looking at which was my NASDAQ so if I jump back to NASDAQ everything that I just did has got auto saved so you know I'm never under the stress that I got to remember to save it so it's pretty much doing that on its own Right, so uh, you know, the power screener works with pretty much everything. I get this question: Does it work with FX and futures? Uh, yes, any symbol that you can access on Zenith, uh, it handles it. And what time frames does it work? Well, uh, very quickly, I'll just go into the menu and uh, 
show you all the different time frames that are in place. So starting from as low as one minute right up to a yearly. Uh, we've, we've taken set intervals, uh, which we've prefixed. And as I said, some of these intervals, like 15 minute, which are very relevant, uh, are, are also included, which you may or may not necessarily be able to do directly through explorations as well. So uh, again, it's, it's a hands-free approach, which I'm trying to get you into. The idea of giving you uh, systems and being rules-based is, is so that it forces some discipline in. And most importantly, uh, using the power screener, uh, you don't have a situation where you miss opportunities. Well, it's definitely going to voice out an alert, email you. And the voice alerts are really cool because uh, let's say you're not looking at the screen. You at least hear it. And uh, you know that's what I really love, that you don't have to be glued to it with your eyes always on it. It could just come in as an email. It could just come in as a voice alert. So that whole situation as to looking for trades becomes so easy. And you know, understanding the trend of the market in just one view, that looks so easy. You know, getting an idea, what's my mark-to-market PL? Getting a nice code board with you, you know, getting all those details up there. Uh, I think that's uh, that's really what's going to help you in a very big way. And of course, with these three new strategies: the new ATMR mode template, uh, the trend decider studies, and the SWI. Again, these are just the new ones. You still have the breakout catcher and all of that, which works pretty well, and and definitely something which I recommend you continue to use. But you know, adding these three new core strategies uh, just makes you understand the trend so much better with those new bar colors, as well as uh, you know, get get you more trading opportunities, more on volume alone based on that SWI. And the trend decider is something I'm sure once you start getting used to it, you're going to love it because uh, I've I've seen users uh, progress with it, and there's been some pretty great feedback. And uh, you know, I would urge you to. I'll uh, keep using it. And again, if you have questions, you've got an excellent team in Metastock. And uh, of course, we are uh, also accessible. Again, if you want to reach out to us, feel free to hit the support button right there. And that, that would give you our uh, contact particulars uh, you know, back in India as well as uh, uh, Metastock's contact information in the US. So pretty much with our different time zones, you pretty much always have someone to go to considering we're open the other 12 hours as well. So I'm going to turn it over to questions now and, and Kelly, if you want to come in at this time and uh, you know do them. Uh, uh, if you have questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer you at this point in time and uh, uh, take up any other doubts that you may have. Absolutely, Rahul. I'm happy to jump in here and uh, pull up the questions that are coming in. Um, so, first question I have here: Does it work for mutual funds? Uh, as long as you have the symbol in Zenith, as I said, if you can chart the, sing, uh, the symbol, uh, it pretty much works. But the issue with mutual funds is, again, you've got to make sure that you have uh, uh, volume data as well. So. Uh, you, you want to make sure you have open, high, low, close, and volume data. You need at least 300 bars of historical data uh, before you get into analyzing it. Yeah, so uh, as long as the data is in there and uh, the symbol you're asking about, Dan, is definitely in there as well. So, uh, Any other questions for Rahul about uh, the uh, new methods or the power screener that, uh, that we've included? Yeah, there's a few more questions coming in here, Rahul, so we'll give it just a moment. Sure. Uh, so one question one I have here, uh, regarding the weekly, uh, the question reads, regarding the weekly closing, is it set to close on Monday? Rahul, are you still there? Yeah, absolutely, Kelly. So um, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you now. Fantastic. So yeah, the weekly uh, is, is pretty much ends on a Sunday for us program-wise, and practically you can apply it only on a Monday because uh, uh, you know that's it knows that the, the the week's ended once the new week has started. So uh, the minute you have the first tick in on a Monday, uh, you can get the new weekly levels. And the, the question that goes on to um, elaborate: uh, What if uh, it applies to markets in the GCC? Uh, so something in the Middle East would would it still uh, work only on a Monday for the for the TD Weekly? Yes, the calendar that we're taking is uh, uh, Sunday through Sunday, and uh, yes, it, we, we pretty much are going to keep that all the way. And we looked at some charts even uh, on the uh, GCC markets when we built it to make sure that 
you know, we are aligned to that because we're in any case taking five business days uh, for our calculation in most cases. So we do get that still. Great, thank you. Uh, let's see, it actually looks like uh, that's all the questions. Oh, somebody did uh, want, wanted to know if you could pull up a chart and look at a specific uh, symbol uh, for the bank nifty. Okay, well, I, I won't be able to do that right away, but then again, feel free to reach out to us on support and we'll, we'll answer any question you have specifically on that symbol. Great, thank you. Uh, it looks like I'm getting some, okay, great, this looks amazing uh, responses. This looks, uh, this is a great tool. Uh, it looks like we're, we're getting comments now about how much people like uh, the RMO ATM too, so that's, a, that's good news there, Rahul. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't, I haven't had any other questions come in otherwise, so I think well, we can go ahead and wrap up there, Rahul. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank each one of you for joining in today. Uh, I think it's uh, it, it's great that you've taken the initiative to be there. Uh, it's a pleasure for me. It's an honor for me uh, for me to be uh, uh, in this webinar, and I hope this uh, really helps you get ahead with trading. Uh, we've very very uh, uh, worked very deep into this uh, add-on and the update, and uh, it, it's very close to my heart. And I think. Uh, uh, with all due, it should definitely add a lot of value and strength in your analysis. So, uh, folks, good luck and thanks once again for joining in. Over to you, Kelly. All right. Uh, once again, Rahul, thank you. Um, Rahul's uh, teaching is actually, as always, as I said at the beginning, very uh, clear, very concise, very understandable to all levels of trade. I think that's one of the reasons that people like his method so much is they're easy to understand, easy to pull in and uh, easy to trade. And that's what uh, the big difference is for us as traders. So um, again, I encourage you to give us a call. Uh, try out the, uh, the Armo ATM2. Uh, it's definitely a, a powerful tool that can help you in your trading. So thank you again, everybody, for attending and uh, have a great day.